Okay, so uh, you guys can hear me, right? It's fine. So yeah, welcome for our uh, like a very special session of the Java user group in Singapore. So for the first time, we are actually having a virtual session. We didn't really think it would happen before, but now it's like special circumstances. Uh, and I, I think many of you guys are aware of uh, the conference we organize, uh, Fox Day Singapore, which we do every year and which we had to cancel this year because of, of the coronavirus. Uh, so we thought, OK, maybe let's take it uh, as a positive thing. And since we cannot take uh, all the speakers to Singapore uh, because the conference is canceled, we thought since we do it like online anyway, maybe we can have like super awesome speakers and uh, like Java champions and all that kind of stuff. So we have a few lined up. The first one is Julian, Julian Dubois who works for Microsoft and who is the founder of jhipster. Uh, so you can see here, like in case you never heard about jhipster before, jhipster is like a Spring and Spring Boot plus Java backend. And you can choose your front end, can be Angular, React, or Vue. And it's basically an application generator. And it's not just a toy, it's actually used by like, I think hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, so yeah, Julian will be showing you how to code an application from scratch and deploying it to production in one hour. Uh, so that's the, what we'll be doing for today. Uh, and just to show you a bit of uh, what we have in plan for the coming weeks, uh, maybe you heard about this guy here, uh, Kosuke Kawaguchi. So he is the creator of Jenkins, awesome guy as well. Uh, so like he did Jenkins for like so many years and recently he had actually moved uh, to a new startup called Launchable, but he's still very involved in the continuous integration and Jenkins community. Uh, so we will have uh, Kosuke next week. Uh, but the difference between Julian and Kosuke is that Julian is based in Europe, which means uh, he can speak like 6 p.m. our time. But Kosuke is based in the US on the West Coast, which means he will be talking. It will be more like a breakfast with Kosuke, if you like. Uh, so it will be 8 a.m. our time when we'll be doing the talk with uh, Kosuke. And the next speaker we have planned as well is the super famous Josh Long. Uh, so he will be doing a demo on Reactive Spring. Uh, that will be a few weeks later. So that's what we have in the plan for the coming weeks. Uh, then we did a small survey have a look at, I think I had a few issues. So like, uh, we wanted to see like, uh, oh guys. Okay, it's a new platform and it seems like I didn't, ah, okay, it's perfect. Uh, yeah, so it seems that nobody has used, uh, oh, we only had two votes, does it make sense? Or... Ah, okay, you guys are voting now. So basically, we have 25% of the people who use JFSTOR in production. Hope, Julian, you didn't vote. <laughs> uh, but yeah, actually, we have 40% of the people who use uh, JFSTOR in production, 10% uh, who use for demos and for applications, and 50% who actually never use JFSTOR. And uh, OK, that one, I think, has some issues. I, I, I go back to it later if I can fix it. So never mind. Uh, there is just one more thing I wanted to share. So it's a bit special times for us uh, here in Singapore. Uh, so yeah, we have the economic crisis, which is due to the coronavirus. So a lot, some companies are actually doing some retrenchments, and we have some people from our community who reach out to us and say that they have been retrenched. So typically, we don't try to advertise, you know, like recruiting and the kind of stuff in our meetup. But it's a bit of a special time. So if you happen to be hiring and would like to reach out to people from our Java user group, uh, please send us a meetup message and we will just put people in touch. Okay, so you can see our meetup page. Just click on send message to the organizers, send it to us, and we will pass the message forward. So yeah, that's all. Uh, that's all for me, Julien. So if you want to, to start, you are good. Okay. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you, Michael. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm trying to get the the. Do, 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 do you see me now? Yes. Uh, but ah, okay. I, I thought this was still on you. Okay. So hi, everybody. Um, 
So I'm Julien Dubois. Thank you, Michael, for, for, for presenting me. Uh, what Michael forgot to say is that we worked together for a couple of years at Spring Source together. So we are very old friends from, from Spring. And um, so it's always a pleasure to, to meet again. We were the two people from Spring Source France. <laughs> so yeah. um, so uh, I'm going to show you what Gipster is and how to deploy it to production. Uh, let's first, uh, so I'm, I'm going to share my screen so you're not going to see me again. So, because <laughs> my face is not the most important thing here. And uh, let's get started. Okay, can you? Ooh. Can you all see my screen? Yes, I think so, yes. Yes, do you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet? Mm -hmm. No, okay, I, I see no, but Zoom tells me it's okay. So that's an issue with Zoom. Uh, let me try this again. Oh, and this time? Yeah. Yes, perfect. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, so um, I'm going first of all to do, a, a, let's say, a, a classical presentation of Jeepster because I saw that only half of you have already used it. Uh, and then I will do a presentation on deploying to production because it was, uh, well, first of all, that was the, the, the theme of, of today's presentation. Uh, and also for people who already use it, I think it's, of course, more, more relevant for them. So I'm going to try to have something for, for everybody. Uh, I will also try to give you let's say, the latest news and information on Jeepster. So it, people who already know it will also have a, uh, well, uh, more relevant information from, a, from, a, from this uh, introduction to Jeepster. Um, I will, oh, as Michael said, I am currently working at Microsoft. So I am working on a service where we can deploy Spring to production uh, on Azure. Uh, this is what I will use, but you will see that most of what we what we will see here are, uh, I would say, independent of any cloud uh, vendor. Uh, you can do it on, on any kind of cloud or even on premise. Uh, you will have some this is some specific help to deploy it to Azure. Uh, but what we also do with Jeepster is that we try to have. Uh, let's say common uh, experience for everybody. So uh, you will have something very similar if you use Azure or Google Cloud or Heroku, for example, from a, from a Jeepster perspective. So uh, uh, we will talk a lot about production and we will use Azure an, as an example, but what we will see here is, uh, I would say, uh, uh, generic for, 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 for the most part. So first of all, let's have a look at Jeepster. So, uh, this is the main web page. It's on Jeepster.tech. Uh, so if you want, I would say, any kind of information of, on Jeepster, that's where you need to go. Uh, it is very complete. And uh, to explain you more what Jeepster is, so Jeepster is a code generator, as Michael said. And uh, what we usually say, again, like Michael said, is that it's a code generator for Spring Boot. And I would say more than front end, like Angular, React, or Vue.js. So that's what people usually tell about it's a full stack generator for a Java backend and a, a modern front end. Things are evolving, things are changing. Uh, now we have also backends uh, which are in preview for .NET, uh, uh, Node.js, uh, Micronaut, Quarkus. So it's not just Spring Boot anymore and it's not even the GVM anymore uh, alone. So it's going to, well, today Jeepster is going to uh, become like a, a, a generic code generator, both for the backend and the front end. Uh, for this demo, we will be, I would say, uh, uh, very, uh, uh, we'll do very simple and normal stuff. So we'll use the Java and Spring Boot backend, and we will use probably Angular on the front end. But we have many, many more options, and this is evolving very quickly. So it will not just be that in the very near future. But so. Uh, Jeepster is very is used by a lot of people, as you can see here on our statistics. Uh, so for the last month, we had nearly 150,000 people uh, downloading it. So it's a big down at the moment because, of course, of the coronavirus. Uh, but still, it's a lot of people installing it. Uh, so those are people installing Jeepster on their machine. So probably they are using it. <laughs> That's why we say we've got tens of thousands of users. Uh, we've got nearly 6, 000, uh, 16,000 GitHub stars. If you can give us some stars, so we, we, 
we, we, we pass that mark, I would be very happy. Uh, and we've got more than 500 contributors. I think it's like 600 or 700 at the moment uh, for, for Gipster. And also we've got many, what we call uh, sub projects, sub generators. And so we got lots of teams of other people who are under the Gipster organization, but who are not contributing to the main project. It's a, it's a very big project. So I'm, yeah, I'm, uh, I am concentrating on the main stuff, but uh, well, it's uh, much bigger than that. Uh, Gipster works also thanks to our sponsors and bakers. So uh, people basically give us money, uh, uh, well, give money to the project. Uh, the project is organized as a, a nonprofit organization. Uh, oh yeah, everything we do is free and open source. We don't have an enterprise version. We don't try to sell you anything. And uh, if you would like to sponsor the project, uh, well, you can give us money, but there's like no, nothing uh, uh, is, uh, is, is, is forced, of course. And that money goes to, the, to our nonprofit organization. So uh, uh, we use it basically for two things. Uh, one, to pay for some bug bounties. So uh, when we have some important bugs to fix or, or features that we would like, we can put some bug bounties on it. Um, and second thing, we use that money to organize some uh, conferences or, or, or events around Jabster. Uh, so we, I have here some little uh, advertisement for our next conference. Uh, we just postponed it today, so it will not be on that date because of the virus, but we will still do that conference in September in France. Uh, should be the 14th of September, but not sure yet. Uh, so we only use that money for the project. Um, let me just go a little bit down. Uh, so as Michael said, so our usual backend is using Spring Boot, but we have now backends in .NET, uh, Node.js, Micronet, and Quarkus. Uh, our usual frontends are on Angular, React, and Vue is still, in, well, it's not in preview anymore, but it's not merged yet in the main project. So you've got three different front ends. And we, when you merge everything, well, that becomes Jeep. So that's why we've got our little logo here. Well, we've got different logos, by the way. So you don't see the same person all the time. Uh, what, uh, what we keep is a bow tie usually. So that's why you, we've got lots of different hipsters depending on who you, uh, who you want to be. Uh, I'm going to do a quick demo and, and then we will talk more, of course, about production. Uh, you can use Jeepster in different ways. Uh, the most, I would say, normal way would be here to, to create a, a, a repository, uh, sorry, a directory, and, and run Gipster on the command line. So it's, uh, you install it uh, as a, a node module, so you need to have node installed, and then you can just type Gipster, and you're going to be able to run it on your, on, on your machine. Um, doing it that way is of course more secure because it's on your laptop uh, you've got tons of options oh i put my screen a little bit yeah you can probably see it better that way uh, and um so this is where you've got the more control and the more power uh, then it's uh, as you can see it's come online uh, stuff so uh, i would say it's good for most people but people might like uh, better uh, a web interface when they are starting that's why for this demo uh, I'm going to use our web interface. We've got different ways to start Jipster, but the, the, the web interface is probably the, the, the easiest way to get started. Uh, so we've got, uh, so our main website is www.jipster.tech and we've got start.jipster.tech. So if you know uh, Spring Boot uh, is the same as start.spring.io, but it's start.jipster.tech. Uh, I don't remember when we started that. We started that quite a long time ago, like uh, like Spring Boot. Uh, I think we copied them, but I'm, I'm not even sure now anymore. Uh, so uh, if you go there, you're going to have the same thing as the common line uh, interface that I just showed, but it's going to be as a web app, so it's easier to use. And also you've got nothing to install at the beginning, so it's easier to get started. That's why I'm doing I'm using that for my for my little demo here. Uh, of course, the more you use Jipster, the more you will use the, the command line. Uh, this is just to getting, for getting starting, started. Uh, let me create a first application. Um, uh, so if you want to log in, so I have logged in. Uh, if you want to log in, what's interesting is that you can push your application to GitHub or to GitLab. Uh, if you don't want to log in, which I can understand, of course, uh, you can still download the generated application as a zip file. So you don't need to Oh, hang on, I, I have a loop now. 
if you need to log in, you will not need to log in uh, for a very long time because I want to suppress that. I, I don't. I know I have some doubt. Uh, because initially you you had to log in, but because we're afraid of people like abusing the service, but we see that nobody abuses it, so we, we're going to remove uh, security. <laughs> so uh, let me create an application on, on GitHub. I'm going to use my own uh, 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 GitHub organization, and I'm going to call my repository test, and. I'm going to answer some questions. So those are the questions you would have, again, uh, on the command line here. Uh, but here, they are easier to, to read. They are simplified. There are few questions which have been removed to make things easier. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's easier to get started uh, using that interface. Uh, the biggest question we have here is, what type of application do you want to do? Do you want to do a, a microservice or a monolith? That's basically the main question. Uh, I remember that for this uh, session, we said we were going to talk about microservices, uh, but let me just tell you the difference between monoliths and microservice from a JPSOF perspective. Uh, so the monolith has got a front end, so you've got Angular, React, or Vue as a front end, and of course a back end. So you've got like a full stack application. If you do a microservice, it's going to be simplified. So you don't have a front end. You don't have React, Angular, or, or Vue.js. Well, you have it, but somewhere else, not on your microservice. And also, if you use a microservice, you've got some specific Spring Cloud uh, features which are enabled, like uh, uh, like Eureka to do service discovery, that kind of thing. So the, the difference is not that big, in fact, in the end, uh, um, but that's yeah, that's the main question you have to answer. Yeah, uh, I could use both. I am going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to select monolith, even if I want to show you microservices for one simple reason is for my demos, I want to show you some data and, and to have something which is nice to see on the screen. And uh, of course, it's better if I have an, an Angular front end than if I have nothing. So otherwise, I would be doing curl all the time to show you stuff, which is not really fun. So I'm going to just to keep that to have some 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 UI on top of my application. Um, we'll keep everything else by default. Uh, just to show you a couple of important things about Zipster. As you can see, we uh, we um, uh, support a lot of databases, like all, all SQL databases, like MySQL, PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL Server, of course. Uh, we support also a lot of NoSQL database like MongoDB, Cassandra, Couchbase, and Neo4j. Um, uh, that's also one of the main questions that you have to answer because well, your data store is, of course, uh, very important uh, for your application. Uh, I'm going to keep the default here, but just to show you uh, how Zipster works, if I select MongoDB, you're going to see that some of the questions are going to change. You see, questions have changed. Going back to SQL, new questions are arriving. Uh, those questions are not uh, like a form that you uh, that you fill up completely. It's like it's more like a tree of questions. Uh, as I selected SQL, I'm going to be able to use uh, Ibanet, and I'm going to use an Ibanet second level cache. If I had uh, selected MongoDB, of course, I would not have Ibanet, and I would not have an Ibanet second level cache. So what you need to understand here is that Zipster is like a tree of questions, and uh, they are ordered in a way that is logical, and we are trying to help you. Uh, and depending on your choices, you're going to have new questions uh, arriving or disappearing, uh, well, uh, depending on what makes sense for you. So I'm going to create a default application, so with a cache. Uh, I'm going to keep Angular. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep everything by default. Uh, oh, hang on, I'm going to, to use Protractor for testing. So if we have time, uh, you know, Protractor is a front-end tool to which is going to click everywhere on my app. So it's it's fun to have it just to show that everything works well. So um, if we have time, we will have a look at it. Uh, I'm going to generate this application on GitHub, on my GitHub account. Uh, and as you are all on the internet, you can even access it yourself. Um, it's going to take like 10 seconds to generate the app. Um, so if you are uh, logged in, of course, you can do it uh, like that. If you are not logged in, uh, the solution would be to download your, app your application as a zip file. So my app is here. As it's public, if you want to test it, well, you can just go to that URL. I'm pasting it in the chat box. So if you want to, to, to test it, you can just go there and uh, have a look at what was generated. Uh, I'm going to clone it. 
and I'm going to uh, I'm, going, I'm going to clone it and I'm going to go there and I'm going to open it with IntelliJ. Uh, Zipster works with all major IDEs, of course. Uh, it's generating, oh, sorry, it's opening in the wrong window. Here it is. Um, it's a, a normal Java and uh, JavaScript application. So uh, all major IDEs will understand what has been generated and everything is going to be set up automatically. Uh, what uh, we didn't uh, talk about yet is that Zipster does not only generate Java and JavaScript uh, code, it also generates a lot of configuration files. So you can see them here on the, uh, on the, on the left. Uh, hang on, I'm going to, to scroll. Oh, sorry. Uh, ah. Sorry, my shortcuts are not working. Maybe it's because of Zoom. No, doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Okay, C can you all see correctly uh, on, on the left? Yeah, if, if you can't see correctly, ju just, oh, I see people. Thank you for telling me, yes, okay. If you, if you if anything goes wrong, just tell me. I have the chat window uh, on the right, so I see if it's okay. Everybody says it's okay, so let's go. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, so yeah, I've got quite a number of configuration files which have been generated for me. Uh, I will take a, a simple one like the .git ignore file. Uh, as you can see here, uh, Jepster is generating you, uh, generating for you also configuration files, so your IDE can set itself up automatically. Uh, that's why, for example, here my, my target directory is uh, uh, excluded because uh, it has been uh, correctly set up. Uh, let's have a look also here at Maven. Uh, I have selected, uh, when I generated my project, I selected Maven. I could have, have also selected Gradle. It works the same way. Uh, so as I generated a, a Maven project, I got a pom.xml file here. Yeah? And so, uh, well, IntelliJ saw it. So it basically configured everything for me. So I have everything working. You can even see here, I've got uh, uh, the app, which is ready to run. Uh, well, because IntelliJ auto configured itself. So I can just click here and my app is going to be up and running. Uh, so all I did was just generate the app, clone it, and then I'm able to run it. And that's basically the experience that we want uh, on Jipster. We want to have something which is very easy to use out of the box. Some people say it's too complicated because we generate a lot of stuff for you. Uh, the idea is that you have something working by default, uh, and then you're going to have a lot of documentation to help you uh, understand what has been generated for you. Uh, we kind of do the other way around to what you usually do is, is having like a blank app and then have to learn everything. Here you have a complete app and documentation to help you understand what has been generated. So my app is running. If I click here, uh, you will see I'm going to have an, a, a small error and that's normal. Let me show you what's going to happen here uh, because it, it expands also what I just talked about. So I have generated my app, I have run it. But as you remember, I selected to have a, a, a monolith. So I have a full stack application. I have a back end and a front end. And here I only started, in fact, the back end. I didn't start the front end. If you have a look here at what is being said, is it, they tell me, oh, you didn't uh, run NSPEN start or, or, or NPEN run webpack. You didn't basically run the front end. So what we do all the time, as you can see here, is we try to guide you. Uh, we know you selected an app with the front end. We see you didn't generate, uh, you didn't start the front end. So we, we tell you what you, what you should do to do it. There are several ways to do it. I'm going to do the easiest way. So I go to package.json here. I'm going to say npm install. And then I'm going to tell IntelliJ to, to run uh, my, uh, my front end. And I will have the front end running on top of the back end, and then everything will be working. Um, oh, it's taking some time to download stuff. I don't know why. Uh, let me show you a little bit what has been generated here. So here it's, an, let's say, classical Spring Boot project. I've got source, main, Java. And here I've got some, let's say, usual Java code and the usual uh, layers that you would have uh, you, when you are developing Spring Boot. I've got like a domain layer, uh, a service layer uh, with some DTOs, for example. I've got a web uh, layer. Uh, all of this, well, all that has been generated here is mostly, uh, let's say, a skeleton app. So 
there is no business value. Well, very little business, mostly for security, um, maybe for internationalization, that kind of thing. Uh, but as much, it's not a business app, it's like a skeleton app, which is empty, and everything is ready for you to get working. Uh, NPM has run. Let me just uh, say NPM start. This is going to start my front end. It's going to connect to the back end, and I will have the whole application running. Uh, we have, once this is done, uh, everything will be running. I will not have to start those again. Uh, we have everything configured to have auto reload working. So for example, when I will change a Java file, I will have auto reload on the Java uh, side, which will be triggered and it will restart automatically. And I will have also auto reload on the front end side. So as soon as I, I change a, a TypeScript file, Angular will restart itself. Uh, well, we have web packs that will rebuild everything and they will think will be auto-loaded. I will show you an example uh, very shortly about that. Um, so the front end is building. As you can see, uh, JavaScript is a lot slower than, than Java. <laughs> um, I, I think I have cleared up my cache at some point because usually it's faster than that. Uh, Anyway, you only do that once because after that, you've got auto reload again, which is working. Yeah, here it is. So here I've got my front end running. Uh, I've got uh, another person arriving. Um, uh, again, this is a, a sample application. So I have only a few screens that are available. I've got screens like this one. So this is a welcome, sc welcome screen. You've got also uh, an error page, a logout screen, uh, that kind of thing. And you've got also some security, which is configured using screen security. Uh, so AI I have logged in. Uh, you can see I can, um, well, uh, do a few uh, things on my accounts, like change my settings. Uh, I've got um, some administration screens which have been generated for me. For example, here I can have a look at my Spring Boot metrics. Uh, so those are the Spring, the metrics from Spring Boot which are which are being displayed by uh, my Angular front end. So I can see my GVN metrics, my HTTP request, my Spring Boot uh, uh, um, Beans performance, uh, the, the statistics on my cache because I, uh, I'm having uh, an Ibernet uh, level two cache, uh, statistics on my data source. So I have access to everything here, but as you can see, it's most the only screens which have been generated are screens for, uh, let's say, uh, uh, general application setup like login, logout, security, and administration. I've got no business code. Business code would appear here, and it's all empty because at the moment I'm having just uh, an empty application. Uh, this is what a lot of people will already use. You don't need more than that to get started. I mean, here if I want to change, let's say, I'm going to uh, to change my on my main app, I'm going to to, uh, to add the logo. I'm going to do something very simple. Uh, here, I'm going to say, uh, uh, oh no, hello from Paris. So I can call here, and as soon as I build my code, auto reload will be triggered. That's why I just click it. I just clicked here. Auto reload will be triggered, uh, uh, and Spring Boot will start. And oh. So it's hidden, it's here. And my application will restart automatically. So it says now, uh, where does it say it? Hello from Paris, I didn't say it. Hang on, it just, I just did it right now. Oh, that's a cool non-working demo. What did I do wrong? Hang on. Let me change something. Ah, skip adding it. And why doesn't it work? Uh, that's weird. Huh? Application is running. It should have appeared here. Hang on. I'm putting some random stuff just to see if it picks up what I'm doing. Maybe I'm not in the right directory at some point, not sure. Oh, Yeah, something is just totally wrong here. I'm going to restart it, just to check. So normally you, you don't need to restart. Yeah, I know it works. Okay, so I had auto reload not working here. Let me test that again. 
because that's the first time it happens to me, honestly. Hot reload with, uh, with Spring Boot usually always work very well. Yeah, now it works. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I, what I did wrong the first time. Oh, now it's working, okay. So I have Hot reload at the back end and same thing on the front end. Uh, if I want to change like welcome here, I can go to my, uh, to my front end, which is here. I can go to home here. I've got some Angular code here. You can see uh, an HTML page, some TypeScript uh, code, and uh, a CSS file. Uh, and instead of saying welcome, I can say bonjour. Oh, sorry, I've got some translation. So I can find the translation here. And I, this is automatically saved. So I just switch here. I don't do anything. And it's automatically uh, restarted. And now I've got bonjour. And the front end works well. That's cool. Uh, so when I work with Zip, so everything is set up for me. I've got auto reload on the back end and on the front end, which is, of course, fun. Uh, and we've got also something called browser sync. So uh, if I open up a new window, uh, my windows are going to be synced up. So if I go to, I don't know, metrics here, you can see that everything is being synced up between my two, uh, my two windows, which is, uh, of course, very, uh, very useful when you want to test and code. So that would be my normal app, as you can see, I can totally work with it like that. Uh, but we're going to improve it. Uh, we're going to first improve it quickly because I see time is running. I'm going to improve some code to add some business code. And then we're going to deploy it to the cloud. Uh, those are basically the same kind of, of, uh, of features. That's why it's interesting to see it twice. Let me just show you first how I'm going to improve my application. So I'm going back here to Zipster Online, so start.zipster.tech. Uh, again, what I'm doing here, you can do it on the command line. Oh, sorry, I see a question uh, from Sarah uh, uh, Sharat. Which authentication type are you using, token-based or session-based? Uh, yeah, oh, by the way, if you have questions, just don't hesitate to type them. I'm having a look sometimes, and, and I will answer them. Uh, yeah, so with, with Gypsum, basically, you've got three kind of authentication. If we go here, you can see them. Uh, so. I will start the, uh, the, the other way. So session-based authentication, uh, that's what you classically do uh, with the Spring Security. So you've got um, a token which is stored in your session. Uh, it is very secure because it's session-based. Uh, it has a few issues to scale because it's session-based also, but honestly, uh, it's not that bad. Uh, that's the one I would honestly prefer, but uh, as of today, nobody uses it anymore. So uh, I don't know, I would not recommend it anymore. <laughs> it's a bit weird because now all the reg is using a JSON Web Token, which is the first uh, uh, option here. So JSON Web Token is, uh, this time is stateless. We've got also a token, but this, this token is stored in your, 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 your browser. So you scale better. Uh, it's also easier to hack. Uh, we've got a nice library for that on Jipster, so it's very easy to, to, to improve and, and, and modify. And I think people love it because it's easy and it's scalable. Uh, then it's a little bit less secured than uh, HTTP sessions. And then you've got, I would say, the best of both worlds here you, if you want to use OO2. So Jipster also support OO2. So when you do OO2, you've got an external server that is going to, to, to authenticate you. Uh, typically, we work with Keyclock from Red Hat and Okta, uh, but they are not the only ones because OO2 is a, is a standard. So it's an open ID connect. It's a standard, so you, you've got lots of other implementation. Like at Microsoft, we've got uh, Microsoft Azure Active Directory. Active Directory works with that also. Um, the advantage of using such an external server is that it's going to be more secure and much more powerful than what you can do by yourself. For example, if you want to factor authentication, um, if you, um, but on the other hand, of course, you need to have that external server. So you need to set it up and maybe pay for it. Uh, if you use Active Directory or Okta, well, both have got some generous free tiers, but at some point you need to pay. If you use Keyclock, uh, which is open source, uh, well, you still need to pay for a server, of course, and, and probably as it's security, you need to pay with that to have, uh, uh, well, security patches. Uh, so, uh, well, whatever the option you will take here, uh, it will cost you more money than JSON Web Token, but uh, it will be also a lot more secure. So I would maybe recommend this uh, for, for security reasons. Anyway, here, for my example, I'm using the first one because it's really very easy to set up and, and hack. Um, 
so uh, yeah, so my application is running. Uh, I'm going to improve it. I'm going to add some what we call entities on top of it. Uh, uh, so Zipster is a code generator, and we have what we call subgenerators. So a subgenerator is something which is coming on top of Zipster and which is going to modify what has been generated. We've got a full API for that, uh, and we can generate many different things. The most obvious one uh, is this one, and it's also the most uh, famous one, so that's why I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to take, for example, this one. Uh, this is what we call uh, the GDL, uh, the Gipster domain language. So it's our own language to to describe uh, a domain model. Uh, as you can see on the left here, I've got like so categories, products, customers. So here it's my domain model. I'm doing uh, 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 an online shop. So my online shop has got customers. Customers have got addresses. Uh, they are they're having wish lists. Uh, for products, products are ordered in, into categories, and I can uh, edit stuff here like I don't know, uh, uh, welcome, uh, which is a string and which is required, and and you can see it's it's being uh, displayed here. I can then save it, and if I go back to Gipster Online, I'm going to be able to take this online shop and apply that model to my existing app. So I created it in test. Uh, I'm going to apply it. So what we are doing now is that we are generating uh, uh, all the code for all those uh, entities that we have described. And uh, Gypsy Online is going to do a pull request on my app with everything. And, and uh, well, I just need to merge my pull request to have all that code arriving. So the pull request is created. Uh, it's very big because we've got, as you can see, 154 pages. Uh, uh, files, uh, it's very big for several reasons. Uh, remember, we're doing the back end and the front end. And the front end, typically with Angular, you've got lots of little files, you know, like CSS, TypeScript, and so on. We also generate all the tests for you. So you've got all the test files. So, so if you just sum everything uh, very quickly, you arrive at a lot of files being generated. Uh, I'm going to merge my pull request. And now all I need to do is go back to my uh, IDE. I just do git pull. Uh, so this is going to get all my code uh, from, from GitHub. As you can see, 144 files, they have just arrived. Uh, as everything is, uh, is working with auto-reload, I just uh, compile here, and my backend is going to restart automatically with that new code. And also my frontend is going to, uh, well, my frontend already restarted because it's all automatic. So if I go here, I can see uh, category products. Uh, I don't. Uh, I think it's category where, where I did welcome. Yeah, so I got welcome here. So that generating my front end and my back end, and you can see I've got even some sample data which arrived. Uh, we use something called Liquibase here, and, and also something called FakerJS to generate some fake data. Uh, so what's interesting here is, you see, I I asked to have this business uh, entity. It generated me. Uh, the back end, the front end, but also the sample data so I can have something like real life straight away. Of course, maybe it doesn't mean anything, you know, for welcome, it didn't understand anything, so it just put some random stuff. Uh, for uh, a debt, it understood it was a debt. Uh, if I go to a customer, it understood that email was an email address, so it generated some random email addresses. Uh, if you don't like those, uh, they are all generated as CSV files uh, here. If I go to config, liquibase, fake data, all the fake data here is here. So you can just edit it with uh, uh, Microsoft Excel, of course. To, to I, I keep working, uh, you know, as I work at Microsoft, I keep, make, I keep making jokes on, on Microsoft stuff. Of course, you don't need to, to use Excel to edit that. But, well, you can if you want to. Uh, so we generate for you the database, the, well, the fake data in the database, the database itself, you know, like the database schema, uh, the Spring Boot backend, and the Angular frontend, so, and all the tests. So everything is working for me and my app is fully running. Uh, as time is running and as I'm speaking too much, uh, let's move to production. Uh, everything we have seen here is, uh, um, has got one goal. Uh, the goal is to make it easier for you as a developer to work. As you can see, everything out reloads, you've got fake data, everything is easy for you. Uh, we've got lots of documentation and, and that's the goal of our development mode. Oh. You can see we are in development mode here because we've got a nice ribbon here, which says development. Uh, of course, the application here is not ready for production. It's not a production app. Uh, first of all, 
as I've got Arch Reload here with Webpack, I don't have a front end which is very performant. You know, it's not magnified as it should be. It's easy to debug, but it's not uh, production ready. Uh, same for my back end. For example, I don't have a real database. You remember I said, uh, when I generated the app, I selected MySQL, which is the default. Uh, well, you didn't see me start any MySQL. Uh, so what's happening is that I'm using in fact H2. So I've got an embedded database. I can go to see it here and I can connect to it. Again, as a developer, everything is easy. You see, everything is set up, uh, but it's not, absolutely not a, some, something which is good for production. In production, I want a real MySQL database. I don't want to have H2 running. So I'm going to switch to the other mode. So we are, we are development mode. Now we are going to switch to production mode. So in production mode, everything is going to be different. So front end will be most, uh, well, will be magnified and will be much faster, but uh, more difficult to, to debug. Uh, the front, the back end will use, for example, a real database, it will use MySQL. It will not have fake data because we are in production. We don't want fake data in production. Um, well, um, so, Let's have a look at how we do this. Uh, the important thing here is that everything is already set up and configured for you. So one of the issues I, I would say that we have sometimes with Jipster is people arriving and telling me, oh, you generate lots of stuff. Like, I don't know what this is or what Docker is. Let me remove all that stuff that is useless. And then like one month later, we have people arriving saying, oh, I want to go to production. Uh, you said it works with Docker. Uh, where are the Docker files? And, like, and we're like, oh yeah, well, you deleted everything. <laughs> so uh, again, we try to generate everything that is useful for you. If it is not, that's, that's why we have sub-generators. Sub-generators are going to improve your existing code. Uh, but uh, uh, otherwise, everything that we generate is usually useful. So don't delete when you don't know why it's here. So um, to go to production, I'm going to have several options with Zipster. The first one, as you can see here, is using Docker. We generated Docker files for you. For example, here for MySQL, I've got a, a MySQL a Docker Compose configuration, which is ready, uh, which has well everything to be uh, running. With some specific configuration for Zipster, we forced everything to be in UTF-8 and to have uh, UTC everywhere. Uh, not everybody does it, and 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 we believe that uh, having uh, UTC everywhere is really good. So we just uh, configure everything for that from the Docker files to the front end to, 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 to the Java code. Uh, that's a lot of work that we do to have something consistent and that you don't always see at the beginning. So um, if you want to go to production, you can use Docker. And for that, let me switch to uh, my Azure documentation. If you want to go to any cloud provider and not just Azure, of course, well, you can run your app in Docker. Uh, I, I'm just going to go to, to Azure just to show you what we propose here, but that we will not use right now. Uh, Azure has got uh, a Kubernetes service or where you can run your Docker apps like any Kubernetes service. So uh, the good thing here as a developer using Jipster is Jipster generates all the Kubernetes configuration for you. So you can deploy to any kind of Kubernetes uh, cloud provider like Google, Amazon, and of course, Azure. Uh, the good thing here is that you're independent of the cloud vendor. Uh, the bad thing is that you need to configure Kubernetes, but we try to, to configure it well for you. So that would be an option. Um, another option that we provide on, on, on Azure is App Service. So App Service is a platform as a service, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which has got some specific uh, uh, support for uh, well, uh, PHP, Python, .NET, and of course, Java. So here you can run your Java app in the platform as a service. So you just push your Jipster app here and it's going to be uh, uh, managed and supported automatically for you. So if you want to, to run your app, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm coming back here to my uh, application and let me just show you, I'm, I'm not going to, to do it that way for this demo, but just to show you how it works, I'm going to, I can run Jipster again and tell Jipster as a app service. Uh, if you want to use uh, uh, Google, uh, Google App Engine, if you want to use Heroku, it's going to be the same one. Ju I'm just showing you this one first, and then I'm going to show you the other ones. Uh, so if I use Jipster as your app service, Jipster A is going to configure app service for me. So it's going to create an app service instance. It's going to reconfigure my app to be able to be deployed automatically on app service. And everything will just run out of the box, uh, I would say magically. 
um, and that's because we've got this specific uh, 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 subgenerator for app service. I'm just going to shut it to close it and to show uh, a competitor like Eroku. So Eroku, of course, is an awesome platform as a service, which also supports Java. So instead of saying Jipster as your app service, I'm saying Jipster Eroku. And again, it's going to ask me questions, and I'm going to be able to deploy automatically to, to Eroku. Uh, all those platforms as a service are awesome because they manage everything for you. So compared to Kubernetes, A, you just push your code. It's going to be built automatically. It's going to be managed automatically. For example, you don't care about the, the, the Java virtual machine. The Java virtual machine is uh, supported uh, by the cloud provider. Uh, so if you are on, on Azure, we have a, um, uh, uh, an agreement with Azure system. So you go to Zulu GDK, which is supported even on GDK 8. Uh, and you don't even have to care about it. We will support it and upgrade it for you without you doing anything. So it's probably more secure and less work to use the platform as a service as, uh, uh, as using Kubernetes. But then it's up to you. Uh, if I go back to Azure, we support all of them anyway. So it's, uh, it could be like my own recommendation, but then it's up to you. Um, and then, uh, oh, just to go quickly to be, to be consist, uh, well, to, to talk about everything, we've got something called Azure Functions. You can deploy your code as uh, uh, software as, a, as, as functions, like Amazon Lambda is the same thing here. Uh, this supports also uh, Spring Boot. We don't have specific support for this on Jipster. We are, uh, well, we could do it because uh, there's nothing really specific uh, uh, about that, uh, but we don't support it yet. And then, uh, because I want to go to the, What's the, the, well, I, I need to select one option. I'm going to, to, to show you the one I'm, I'm working on. Uh, we've got a specific cloud for, 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 for Spring, which is called Azure Spring Cloud. So it's a cloud that we uh, have uh, created uh, with VMware, so formerly Pivotal. Uh, so it's a joint uh, work uh, between the creators of Spring and, 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 and Microsoft. So if you want to use it, First of all, hang on, let me just show you uh, the documentation. Uh, we've got this grid on Microsoft. We've got this grid thing called Microsoft Learn. If you want to learn anything about Azure, just go there. You've got like tons of documentation and everything. And if you want to learn more about Spring, we've got a full tutorial on, on deploying Spring applications to Azure. It's awesome because I wrote it myself. <laughs> um, and oh, I got some good marks. So if you finish it, please do, please, uh, well, uh, give me a mark. You don't, I mean, if you don't like it, just tell me also. But if you, if you want to go give me a good mark, please, please do. Uh, I'm going to do quickly what is being done in the workshop. So the workshop is supposed to last one or one and a half. Honestly, uh, you can, it can go quicker or, or, or longer depending on, on how you do or what you want to look at. Uh, here you do everything manually. Uh, I'm going to do it automatically here with Jipster, so you can tell it's going to go a lot faster. Um, so let me show you what Azure Spring Cloud is all about. So it's also platform as a, as a service, but it's, it is uh, uh, um, oriented towards Spring. So I already created a couple of things. So I already created a Spring cluster here. Oh, I called everything Juju Bois because I, I was lazy. Uh, you should give some real names, of course. Uh, so I created a cluster and I created a MySQL database because I, well, I want to do some data in the MySQL database. Uh, just to show you that I am not cheating, I, am, I have opened up the My, uh, MySQL database already. It's here and as you can see, it's empty. I don't even have, a, a, well, I've got the sys schema, but I've got no schema for JIP, so I've got nothing in it. Um, and if I go here to my Spring cluster, uh, so this is a, a specific service for running Spring application, and it has got specific support for Spring. For example, uh, if you if you use Spring Cloud, you probably have heard of Spring Cloud Config Server. Uh, here you can have a, a full Spring Cloud Config Server, which is uh, set up for you. So this Config Server is going to push configuration to your app. Uh, if you want to put Spring in production by yourself, you need to have a way to store your, your, your secrets or your configuration. So let me just show you what has been generated by Jipster and then let me show you why this is bad in production and why you should do better. Uh, when we go here, we've got some specific YAML configuration for Spring Boot. 
let's go to the production YAML file. So here uh, I am describing, for example, my data source. I'm saying, okay, my data source is here. Uh, this is my, my, the name of my schema. Here is my username and here is my password. So if you use Zipster, this is, oh, by the way, this will work out of the box with Docker because those are in fact, the, this is in fact the configuration that we do with Docker Compose. So it will work out of the box. You can tell it's not very good. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, it's not very secured. Uh, local host uh, with SSL force. Let me put that to true, by the way. Um, because on local host, I don't have a certificate. Uh, the username is here, the password is here. So when I'm going to do git push and commit that to my uh, directory, like everybody will see my password, which is of course not a good idea at all. So uh, I should not put my configuration here. Uh, well, I can put it there if I'm lazy, but of course it's not a good solution from a security point of view. There are many ways uh, to, to store uh, this data. Uh, if you use Spring Cloud, uh, so Spring Cloud has got uh, uh, what they call Spring Cloud Config Server, which is a configuration server for Spring. And, and this is going to store your data in a Git repository, but a separate one, which is secured. And this is going to push your configuration to your app. So I've got a sample one here. Well, let me just show you. Uh, so this one is public. It should not be public, but it's public so I can show you. And so you like, you can use it. By the way, I can, let me post this to, to the chat room. Um, here, all it does, I, I'm not putting my database configuration here because it's public, of course. All it does is that it's going to, to send you a message telling you, oh, I've been configured by, uh, by, by, by a Spring Cloud config server. So that just tells you that it's all right. So this, this will put uh, that message in, in, a, in a property which is called application.message. Let me just go to my app here. And if we go to application properties here, so this is, this is uh, mapped on the application uh, message, uh, on the application uh, configuration. And as you can see, it's application.message. Here I want a, a, a string, a private, ooh, private string message. I want to generate getters and setters. Oh, I definitely have trouble with my shortcuts. Uh, okay. Uh, so this message is by default empty. As you see, I don't configure anything. And what's going to happen is that when I will push my app to production, um, my config server is going to take that configuration here and put that into my message. So I should have that string, which is automatically pushed to this uh, uh, this class file. We'll see if it works. Well, it will work. O otherwise, the application will not start. By the way, uh, let me just configure that. Uh, sorry, uh, what did I do? Um, okay, sorry, because I didn't configure it. So I need to take this, and I'm going to configure it here. And it's a public directory. So this is how you should configure your application, it should be configured by an external configuration server. That's why Spring Cloud provides you. Uh, Spring, you Spring Cloud also provides you with a second important thing. It's, co it's called a discovery server. So at the moment, I have no application which is deployed. As soon as I will deploy my application to other Spring Cloud, they will automatically register to, uh, 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 um, uh, to, to, to the discovery server, which is based on Eureka. And that will allow my application to see each other and to, to route request to, to them. So I say I've got a question. Can we use this application property style in other environments like Heroku? Uh, yes and no. Uh, so if you go to Heroku, uh, so there are different ways to, to configure your application properties. You can, by the way, let, let me create a sample app just because I want to show you that. Um, uh, you can set up environment variables. So that's what I'm going to show you as soon as my app is created here. Uh, so you can put environment variables, that works. Uh, it's a bit annoying because you need to type everything uh, and you need to transform your YAML to environment variables. Also, it's not that secure because well, like everybody has got access to the environment variables. Uh, so that's one way to do it. Um, you can, with Heroku, you can also uh, use a Spring Cloud config server like we did here. So I've got good news for you. Let me just go to, to gipster.tech. 
So gypster.tech, we've got our own configuration server, which we call the gypster registry. Uh, I'm going to use my own search box because I don't remember where it is. Uh, here it is. And so that you can run on, uh, on um, Heroku and you should be able to do it automatically. We've got a button somewhere. I don't remember where it is. We have a button to run this automatically on Heroku. Uh, oh, maybe I need to go to Heroku, in fact. I'm going production, Heroku. Yes, it's here. So you can just click on that button and you would have uh, a Eureka server automatically deployed to Heroku. So the difference between Heroku and what I'm doing here with Azure Spring Cloud, well, the main difference is here you've got a Eureka server which is managed by Azure Spring Cloud. So you don't see it, you don't deploy it, you cannot update it, uh, you cannot do anything about it. It's managed for you. So you don't see anything about it. Uh, you, you, you're not charged for it, by the way, you, yeah, it's just there. Uh, if you go to Heroku, here you need to deploy it yourself and maybe upgrade it yourself. Uh, so it's here you've got something which is more manual and here everything is automatic. Uh, also here we've got support from Pivotal and if you do it here, well, you don't have support from Pivotal. Uh, honestly, both will work the same afterwards. So it's mostly a matter of uh, uh, having something which is easy to deploy and, and having less stress. Uh, or, or, or maybe if you want to go to Heroku, maybe here yeah, you want to, to tune everything. You've got more, probably more capabilities because you can, well, you, it's your own code, so you can do whatever you want. Uh, so it's, it's a matter of choice. Uh, well, by the way, you can also deploy this to other Spring Cloud. So <laughs> it's, well, lot, lots of possibilities. So. Just to, to answer the question from, from Sharat, yeah, yes, you can do it. A little bit differently, but it's, it's the same idea. Uh, so I just deployed uh, an empty app. Uh, as you can see, we've got a discovery status. So this is Eureka. Uh, all you that you see is my app is running. And that's all that you can see that Eureka is totally managed for you. You, you, don't, uh, uh, you just use it, but you don't uh, uh, support it or manage it. Uh, let's have a closer look now at uh, going to production with my application here. So we developed it. We, oh, sorry, I, I need to configure my, hang on. I'm just going to, yeah, sorry. Uh, I forgot to say one thing here. We need to configure the, data, the database. Uh, as we saw, my database is empty. I got no database. Uh, I've got a database which we configured earlier, well, which I configured before this meeting, which is here. So, um, a few things about databases on Azure. So we support MySQL, we support PostgreSQL, we support, of course, SQL Server. Uh, they all have their advantages and disadvantages, and honestly, we don't have the time to check all of them. Uh, they basically all work the same from an API point of view. So you, it's very easy to switch between them. What you will need to do every time, and what I've already done, so that's why I want to show you what I did. By default, they're all secured. So I have unsecured them. I have removed the firewall so I can access it. That's why I can uh, access my database from my uh, computer here with uh, my SQL Workbench. So I, I have removed, well, I have added my, uh, my uh, oh, I got, a, I got a bug. Well, time is running, so I will have a look at the bug later. Uh, so I have opened up my firewall so I can access my database. And so here it gives me my connection string. So I need to configure my database connection. So once again, you should not do it in your uh, um, application.prod file, but as time is running, I'm, I'm going to do it that way because otherwise uh, we'll be too late. So login is here. And of course, I am not going to show you my password. So I go to the other screen to copy paste the password. Uh, if I can find it quickly, Come on, come on, come on. Uh, password. Yeah, I got my password here. Okay. Uh, so um, my app is configured. I'm going to deploy it. So as I showed before, this time I'm going to use the command line. So I did a Gipster as your app service. I did Gipster Heroku. This time I'm going to do Gipster as a Spring Cloud. So as you can see, it's always the same 
stuff with Jupyter. It's always work kind of the same way. That's also why you are productive. It's because we we take care in giving you a tool that is uh, uh, homogeneous uh, across uh, front end, back end, across clouds, uh, cloud providers. So it's it's a lot easier to use than uh, uh, having to learn everything by itself. Uh, um, so. This generator is scanning Azure, so it saw that I have a default Azure uh, uh, group, which is this one, this is good. Uh, my cluster is this, is this also, so it saw everything. It saw the name of my app. I'm going, going to put everything by default, yeah. I just clicked yes, and let me just explain that last option. Um, so uh, you can usually deploy uh, Jipster application in two ways. Once again, we are very homogeneous, so it's always kind of the same thing in Jipster. You can either build your app locally, which is what I'm going to do right now, uh, because I've got a, a, a nice uh, a, a MacBook, so it's going to build quickly, hopefully. Uh, or you can deploy and, and build your application to the cloud, which is what I would uh, recommend, in fact, for normal people. Uh, if, for example, we support GitHub Actions, so the idea would be that you just push your code to GitHub, you just do Git push, and then GitHub Action is going to build your app and deploy it. And Jipster is going to generate um, the, the, uh, the GitHub Action workflow for you. So if I, if I had said uh, that I wanted to generate, well, to, to deploy my app with GitHub Actions, it would have generated for me uh, a GitHub Actions workflow and everything would have worked uh, automatically. Uh, the end result, and that's our goal uh, for Jipster, is that you just do Git push. You don't even know that you are using Azure Spring Cloud or Heroku or Google. You just do Git push and it's working automatically for you. That's the that's real goal, in fact. Uh, now, I went a little bit quickly because I knew it's, that this was going to take some time. So just let me show you what I just did. Uh, we, in fact, uh, uh, well, Jipster generated a couple of lines of code for me. Uh, let me just show them to you. The first, the first thing is it did is in my Maven pom.xml, it added, we can see it here in, in, because it's, uh, it's green, it added a, a specific uh, uh, profile for Azure. Uh, Basically, what that profile does is that it configures a, a Spring Cloud uh, config and, and Eureka. So I, I can uh, configure, uh, so well, my application will take its configuration for Spring Cloud config, and also it will automatically register in Eureka. So, uh, well, everything will work. Uh, that's the first thing it did. And also, oh, sorry, and also it configures this, uh, which is called Zipkin. So Zipkin is, is a distributed tracing uh, solution, which is, totally outside of Azure, by the way, but we support it in Azure and, and, and we believe it's important to have uh, uh, monitoring in production. That's another thing that we try to always do in Jipster. We are very production focused, so we will always generate for you everything about monitoring and security because we believe that you will want this uh, when you will go to production. So, security, so uh, monitoring is already configured for you. So the first thing it did is create a specific uh, Maven profile for those dependencies. And the second thing it did is that it created for me a specific Spring Boot profile. And such Spring Boot profile doesn't do a lot. Uh, I don't even think it does anything. Well, yeah. well, it, it, it's another place where you can reconfigure some stuff that we put, but yeah, it doesn't do anything specific. It's, it's mostly uh, some, some skeleton uh, uh, configuration files that you can tune later if you want to. Uh, what's happening now? is that, uh, so Jipster is building my wall app. So currently it's magnifying the front end. You remember we had a big Angular front end, so it needs to magnify it uh, and, and create some bundles for those. Uh, it's also going to run all the tests, backend tests with Genit, front end test uh, also uh, with Jest. Uh, so all of those take some time. Here you can see all the Jest tests, which I've just, just passed. Now it's running the, the, the Maven uh, test. Uh, we have a strong focus also on tests. I did not have the time to show everything to you, but we have, of course, a strong focus on tests. So it's going to test everything. And then, it, well, once all the tests have passed, it's going to, 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 to package everything and send it to other Spring Cloud, which will run it. I'm saying, and there's a question, do we have to adjust something for OpenJDK? Uh, so by default, we use Adopt OpenJDK. Uh, um, you know, for everything on Jipster, because well, it's, I would say it's uh, like the most famous OpenJDK distribution. Uh, if you are on the current stable version, we support JDK 8 to 13, 
in fact, it also works with 14, but I mean, 14 was just released, so we didn't, uh, you know, uh, remove the limit. Uh, so next version will also support the 14, or well, today you can just force it. Uh, so it basically works with all OpenGDK versions. Uh, I don't know when we will remove GDK 8 because it's deprecated, but most people are still using it, so we need to, to see that. Um, so that's how Jipster works. Then for uh, Azure, on Azure, we have an agreement uh, so with Azure system. So we're using the Zulu uh, GDK, which is, which is supported. Uh, it also works well, you know, in the end, you've got no difference as a user. Uh, what is important for you is that uh, when your app will be uh, deployed here, uh, well, that application will have a supported GDK. It will also uh, have a supported Spring Cloud uh, version. So everything is supported both by Azure, uh, uh, well, Microsoft, by VMware for, for Spring, and by uh, Azure system for the GDK. So what's interesting here is that you've got something which is fully supported. Um, of course, that depends on, I mean, I don't know what you, what you want to do, uh, but I, I would rather use a supported version and, and something which is automatically upgraded than do it by myself. But of course, it depends on, on what you, you'd rather do. Um, let me just show you that, that screen again quickly. So this, this is where my, uh, my Spring Boot applications are getting deployed. Uh, I don't know if you remember, I created a test app. I didn't create this one. This was created automatically by Jipster. So if it already existed, Jipster would have reused it. But as it didn't, well, Jipster created it for me. And, uh, and oh, and so it, uh, it packaged my whole app uh, and it pushed it to, to, uh, to this, uh, so to, to, to this instance here. And so this instance is currently upgrading and it's going to, to, to run my app. Uh, it's already running from what I can see here. Let me just have a look first at the logs because uh, I don't like to take risk. Uh, I can have the logs here in the, in, the, in the console, which is, yeah, it's already running. So that's good. Uh, yeah, we've got logs uh, on, the, on, on, the, on the console, which is always better. Uh, so if I go to my app here, so uh, my app is running here. It's secured for the moment, so it's not. It doesn't have a public URL. It's got a test on point with a, with, a, with a token, so you can check it. I'm going to give it a public URL so we can have a look. Here it is. Of course, as this is supposed to be a microservice, you should not expose it like that. But I'm just doing a demo, so I've got a front end, I'm exposing it. And so here you can see that my app is running. I can share it here. Uh, I shared it on the, on, on, the, on, the, on the chat. And here I can log in. And if I go to my entities now, they're empty because I'm using a real database. So everything is empty. I don't have fake data anymore. Oh, by the way, let's have a look at the database. Uh, so I had nothing, and if I go uh, refresh all, my database is here, and I've got my data, here, like tables, uh, like category. So category is empty for the moment. And if I create a new one, uh, uh, YOLO. I'm not uh, very, uh, I don't have good ideas today. <laughs> so I created here uh, uh, some data. And if I run it again, so my data is here now. So I can see that I'm using the real production database. And this app. Uh, now is magnified. So if I use uh, something like uh, 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 an audit from, um, uh, from, from Google Chrome, I can generate a report here and it's going to, to tell me that, well, I've got a very, very good app. Uh, the only thing missing right now, I think, is that we don't have HTTP2 by default uh, uh, because we know that not everybody supports it. And that's why we don't have 100% everywhere. I think that's why, but otherwise, like as you can see, we've got like nearly 100% of everything. Best practices, SEO, accessibility, performance, everything is really, really good. Um, okay, uh, as time is running, let me just show you two last things. Uh, just going back to my app here, uh, because I remember, yeah. Oh, you have five, sorry. Five minutes left, that's okay. Five, five minutes? Yeah. Yeah, well, honestly, it will be done in five minutes. Uh, because I remember when I uh, wrote the, the, the comments about these sessions that we would scale them. So just to show how you, you scale them, you just click on scale. <laughs> this one is, is easy. And you say, okay, I want four CPUs. I want more RAM. I've got more instances. And you say save and up. 
I'm scaling my app. That was that one was easy, but once again, you need to have a good cloud platform for that. The other thing I wanted to show you was logging. Uh, well, I already showed you the logs here, so you can imagine that the logs are, are, are being uh, uh, aggregated by Azure Spring Cloud. So let's not, not, not have a look at this. Uh, you've got, of course, of course, metrics from your GVM, so you can have a look at your metrics. And what's more important for microservices is that we've got here something called distributed tracing. Uh, I've got only one service, so we are only going to see this one. Um, what Azure Spring Cloud does here is it's instrumenting all your applications uh, because I have added, I don't, I don't know if you remembered, I added Zipkin. Oh, so when I go here, I added Zipkin supports. So, so Zipkin's, Zipkin is, is, is uh, adding some uh, tracing data on all my requests. And, and then Azure Spring Cloud is taking that data to monitor your app. So if you have several microservices, it's going to map them and give you performance data on all of those microservices. And you'll be able to, to see that, okay, this request is slow and you can have a look at why your request is slow. Maybe you had an, an, an issue, or well, that's because I, I, I didn't log in first um, and so on and so on. So um, here, here we've got something which is fully ready for production without honestly doing much. Uh, as we've got only five minutes left, uh, if you have any questions, I think it's time to put the, oh yeah, question from, oh, Philip Soares, oh, I know you, hi, Philip. Uh, the memory requirements seem a bit huge for a microservice. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, yes, 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 you are right. The slider increments by step of one gigabyte. Uh, yes, uh, for, uh, for a Gypsy app, uh, I think it runs on 256 megs, but it's really, really small. Uh, I would do like 512 megabytes. Uh, that would run normally fine. Uh, one gigabyte is big. Uh, I think that's, yeah, everything, th that's, that's the only option at the moment on Azure Spring Cloud. That's something I can have a look at, yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, by the way, just to tell you my real job here, um, I'm working in that, in that team to give them also feedback from, from users. And uh, indeed I did, I don't know why we didn't. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Maybe we should have yeah something more 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 simple than that. Yes. Well, to to have more uh, more options here. Yeah. yeah, we just increment by one gigabyte by one gigabyte. Yeah. Yes, I don't think those gigabytes are very expensive. So, but we need to check that. Uh, by uh, yeah, by default you've got. I don't remember how much. I think you've got like thirty-two gigabytes by default. And so you can run a lot of them and then you pay by gigabytes and by hour probably. And it's pretty cheap, but that's something that you need to check. Uh, yeah, my company has 650 microservices and we're trying to reduce that. Oh yeah, if you've got that many microservices, at some point it's going to be expensive. Uh, also you need to be able to scale them. So if you have like 650, maybe you've got another thousands of instances. So in that case, yeah, that can be quite a lot of money. So that's something that, yeah. We can have a look at this because it's uh, yeah it's it's hard coded here, but there's, there's like nothing uh, uh, which is uh, which is very uh, uh, you know it's a, yeah we can totally change that yes. Uh, is there a plugin to generate uh, GDL from an existing database? We all we have this question very often. Uh, there is a team uh, which did that. Uh, the Belgium. I forgot the name of the plugin. Hang on. Uh, so. Uh, Gypsy was never meant to, to do that. So I was very surprised when I saw people doing this. Uh, but uh, hi. it's not there, hang on. Let me go to tools, uh, no, sorry, modules and blueprints. Market. So we got a marketplace with all the, the, so what we call modules or blueprints. So that, those are external people who, who are uh, uh, giving us some add-ons and there is one to do that. I don't remember the name, I never remember the name. Hmm. You need to have a look here. Um, it's here. I, I'm not telling it works for every kind of databases, but I remember it was very, very smart. And, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, well, your only option at the moment. Uh, would the new Spring Grail module help reduce that? Com oh, yes. With, uh, I mean, yeah, so Philip means Grail VM. So there's Grail VM uh, 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 compilation arriving to Spring. 
uh, they have announced even something about that last week. Uh, it's not there yet, but yes, it's going to arrive. I'm most interested by it for Spring Cloud functions because for functions you need fast startup. And as you can see, it's honestly working quite well. You don't uh, you, and and also I'm very happy to have the GVM here because we've got a good GVM team at Microsoft. Uh, the important thing, uh, typically on Azure Spring Cloud, is to be able to monitor the GVM and be able to scale it up and down. And uh, I don't know if you know that, but we just bought a company called G Clarity, and they're experts in that. Uh, so uh, what I, well, my, my, my real focus at the moment on Azure Spring Cloud is to have great uh, scale in and uh, up and down using some good JVM tuning, uh, because that's where you will gain money. If you are able to scale up and down very efficiently, that's where you will gain money. I mean, you as a customer. Uh, then for something like, uh, like Azure Functions, when you need fast startup, if you are doing Lambdas, then yes, GraalVM is a good option. Uh, well, the Spring team is working on it. The GraalVM team is working on it. I, I know both team, uh, and I, I know they, they are doing a lot of work on that. Uh, it's not totally ready yet, but as soon as it is, clearly, uh, well, there will be work on that, clearly. Uh, and for Gypsy, yeah, so we will do that also for Gypsy. Then Gypsy is much more complex, uh, so uh, than uh, than standard Spring Boot application. I, uh, we will it will take us some time. So yeah, for the record, we have a Quarkus version of Gypsy, and it does not work with BlaVM yet, because what we do on top of Quarkus is is more complex than just a simple Hello World. So if you have if you are doing a Hello World, it's going to work well with BlaVM. But if you do something more complex. Uh, well, it's it's more work. So even even with Quarkus, we don't have GraalVM support yet on, on Jibster. So just to tell you how complex it is. Uh, oh yes, I see Pascal is answering about the the, the database, and it's this one. Yes, Bastien Michaud, that's it. Uh, so if you are on the chat, uh, you've got the answer about the the, the, the database uh, generation. And it's not maintained anymore, but I think it was quite good already. But yeah, you need to have a look at that. Uh, we've got Guillaume asking, you're using Monolith on your Azure Spring Cloud, isn't it interesting? Oh, yeah, uh, it's mostly, it's only for my demo. Uh, that's what I, why at the beginning I said I'm going to use a Monolith to have a, a front end. Uh, if you want to do microservices, uh, uh, Azure Spring Cloud is a good solution, uh, uh, especially because as you can see, you've got Eureka, you've got the Spring Cloud config, you've got uh, 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 distributed tracing. This is all microservice stuff. So. If you are doing a microservice, that's a great option. If you're doing a monolith, uh, you don't really need, need all that. So you're going basically to pay for that service and you, you're not going to use, I would say, most of it. If you are just doing a normal uh, a, a monolith, I would recommend uh, Azure App Service, which is our other, which is a pass, which is another service from, from Microsoft, Azure. And uh, it's going to be cheaper and work uh, well, as well for, for monolith. So it's, it's mostly for my demo. So, that's why I did a front end. Uh, if I didn't do this, uh, uh, you see, I, I could show you my front end here. Uh, if if I had if I hadn't created a, a front end, I would have like I don't know like some swagger stuff or some JSON stuff could have been pretty ugly, and I would have like nothing to show for the demo. But yeah, it's mostly for for uh, graphical. Um, get has the option uh, question with OpenJDK. There are other tools impacted by Gradle, Spring, etc. Uh, I don't get it again. I don't get the, the question. Uh, we I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Shavat, I don't totally understand the question. We, we do support Maven Gradle, uh, uh, a Jeepster. Uh, when I generated the app, uh, if I go back to, 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 to uh, start the Jeepster.tech, uh, yeah, I had the option to use uh, Gradle somewhere. I don't remember where it is, but I had the option should have the option somewhere. Uh, here it is. Yeah, yeah I, could, I could have selected Gradle. Uh, it's very well supported. Uh, we've got, I, I would say, like 20% of our users using Gradle. Um, uh, yeah, basically, it's going to work as well as, as Maven. Uh, can you hear yes. me now? Yes. Um, Time is running. Uh, we have an existing JSP application, and, uh, uh, and uh, how do we migrate to the latest open JDK a new Gradle version with Spring and other things? Because if you oh, upgrade the Gradle, it also has a dependency with the Spring. Yes. So because you've got an existing application and you want to upgrade it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Only that. 
tool only the tooling part for example because credit oh. if you only upgrade credit it also has dependency with spring yes uh so the issue is mostly for upgrading and that's a, a very good and, and, and usual question when you use a, a, a generator uh, the issue is that you have generated your app we are giving you a new version and how do you upgrade uh first of all as you and you are totally right about that uh, you probably coded a lot of business code in your java uh, so if i go to here to my java code you probably don't want to update any of that code that was no no you had category you modified it you don't want to upgrade that probably yes. what you will want to upgrade well, it depends of course but yeah i mean normal people that was that what would happen for them and and what you will want to upgrade is the tooling so typically uh, so here i've got maven for Gradle, it's probably the same thing. Uh, so I'm just going to, to to take Maven as an example because it's here, but for, for, for Gradle, you, you will have the same thing. Uh, so here, several things are going to happen. Uh, first of all, so if you, use, if you run Gipster again, we can regenerate that file and you can use something like Git to, to do a merge and have a look at what we upgraded for you. Uh, if you do that, well, two things are going to happen. Uh, maybe you have uh, added some some lines, like oh, like I did here. So, if you if you did that, your merge should work fine because those lines do not exist in a, in the normal Gipster app. So, when you will merge, it will work. And then there's the opposite. Maybe we added some stuff, and and then if you didn't change those lines, well, it will also work. The main issue you will get is, for example, let's say. You have modified, uh, you have said, hang on, I'm just going here. Yeah. Uh, we were using this version and you upgraded to 2.2.2 and Gipster did the same thing. So we modified the same code, uh, you know, both Gipster and you, and there you will have a, a conflict. And that's the biggest issue is when you have merge conflicts. Uh, we're trying to limit them as much as we can. Uh, typically, this is why, uh, so uh, if I go, on top here, uh, sorry, where is it? This is why we have, oh, sorry, it's here. This is why we are doing this now with Gypsum. Huh? And this is something we are going to push more and more. We, we didn't do it everywhere on Gypsum yet uh, because we were at the beginning very reluctant about that. We had a lot of questions. Uh, so what Gypsum does now is that it gives you, for example, a, 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 um, a dependency management, uh, what's what's called a bomb, a bill of material. Uh, so it's a, it's a dependency management uh, uh, artifact for Maven. Uh, we are also having our own uh, uh, Maven dependency, which is called the Gypsy Framework. Uh, we do that because to upgrade is going to be a lot easier. Here, you just upgrade the version of your dependencies and everything upgrades. So here you have like no merge conflicts. It's a, it's a dependency that you upgrade. It's not code that you need to merge. Um, that's why, so initially, Gypsy was just a generator and that's what Everybody sees it as a, as a generator, and Michael, in fact, said it was a generator. As you can see it here, it's not all a generator anymore. It's also like a framework. And, and, and we didn't want to do it at first because we're afraid that people would not be happy that it becomes more than a generator. But in the end, we realized that we are generating a lot of stuff that nobody touches. Uh, nobody wants to, for example, if for the also dependencies, it's very complex to test all the dependencies uh, and to be sure that they all work together. So we do that work. And we saw that, well, nobody wants to do that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and this is something, for example, for our security code. Our security code, it was audited by a lot of people, including very uh, famous security researchers. So we know that our security code is really good and audited and documented. And nobody wants to touch that because if you touch, touch this, you're going to, to, to create issues. And so all of those, uh, we are packaging them more and more into frameworks. And so updating them would just be a, a matter of updating the, the version here. And so that will limit the issue. And that's, uh, uh, I hope that answers your question. We're going to, to try to help you do the upgrades more and more by limiting what we generate. Uh, it's only the beginning, of course. I hope I answered your question. Hang on. I, I'm seeing more, a lot of questions. Oh, obviously, it's really perfect for microservices, not monolith. Yes, <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, it's good for monoliths mostly. Uh, for microservices mostly. Uh, don't remove to. Oh yes. Uh, another oh, well, a comment was that it's uh, while well, using the cloud is quite costly, basically. So the demo I did here, in fact, is costing some money, like everything. 
just just let me show you a couple of things. So here I have selected uh, so a Spring Cloud cluster, which is a bit expensive, to be honest. Uh, those things will change. It's currently in preview. Uh, there will be like different pricing tiers and everything. So don't take everything here as, 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 uh, as forever. So things are going to change. I also selected the database, and my database, I, I took a big one. You know, so as I work from, for Microsoft, I don't pay, so I don't really take care of that. Uh, but what you need to do, and uh, what is clearly my recommendation, so first of all, you do like me, uh, I, I, I have what we call a resource group. So I, I did a specific resource group for, for this meetup. So all I will need to do is delete the resource group, and everything will, will disappear. So if you do that, you are sure that you don't have any resources like hanging around uh, that you forget and that you will have a, a big bill to, to pay at the end. Uh, oh, I can even show you my own resource groups. There's nothing, oh, this is, I'm not doing anything secret here. You see, I've got resource group for this meetup. Yeah, I think uh, we're running be, a bit. <laughs> uh, sorry? I think we're running a bit late, so please. Oh, yes. Oh, so, 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 I, so I just finished on this. So yeah, uh, yeah. my recommendation is that you do resource groups and you, then you delete them so you don't pay a lot of money. Uh, my other recommendation is that you use something like Terraform to automatic to automate everything. Just, ju just to show you, uh, uh, I've got my own Terraform script here, and I basically I automate everything. So when I need something like here, I created that like one hour ago, just to to well before the uh, before the session, and I'm going to delete it just afterwards, so I don't pay a lot of money. It's going to cost me a few euros because I, I'm going to be quick to uh, create and delete everything. Uh, I'm just having a look at the last questions. People saying thank you. Well, thank you to everybody for coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, so it's mostly people saying thank you. And as Michael said, oh, that was the last question. Thanks. Yes. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Oh, let me stop sharing my, my screen to if I can find where it is. Oh, stop share. Okay. Thanks a lot, Julian. So, cool. Yes. Thanks uh, a lot, everybody. And yeah. thanks for staying. There are still 39 people. Yes. Oh. So yeah. th thanks a lot for, for, for coming with uh, so many people. Uh, if you want to play with the app like Michael, enjoy it because I'm going to delete very, <laughs> very soon. And, uh, and if you have any question or if you want to participate to JIP, so don't hesitate to, to, well, to, to join the, 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 the fun. Uh, we will be happy to have, of course, more, more people using it, but also more contributors. Thank you, Julia. I just wanted to conclude and say, like, because okay, I didn't. My survey was not working before. Now it's okay. Uh, yeah, it's actually quite cool to see that we have people from pretty much a lot of places. So mostly Singapore, but also France, Italy, Singapore, Vancouver, India, and so on. So thanks a lot, so all of you guys for joining our meetup. And we will have another one next week, like we said, with Kosuke from, uh, who is the creator of Jenkins. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers.